This recently went viral on Twitter. This is the cheek and neck of a 92 year old female who used UV protective moisturizers on her face, but not on the neck every day for 40 plus years. Now, I don't know if this patient has had any extra work done, and neither do you, but regardless, sunscreen will protect against wrinkles and brown spots as well, not just skin cancer. UVA will cause solar elastosis, that's degeneration of the deeper skin tissue. But this last point is beautifully illustrated by this iconic image dubbed the asymmetric window case. This is a truck driver of 28 years. You can see where the side facing the driver's side window gets much more UV exposure. Sun exposure can have an aging effect on our skin because of the ultraviolet rays. They're capable of penetrating its layers and damaging our cells. Looking old because you're old is known as chronological aging. But looking older as a result of sun exposure is called photoaging. Skin that looks older often results from the kind of cell damage which puts a person at an increased risk of developing cancer. So be it through diet, lifestyle, or even simple sunscreen, preventing aging may be akin to a preventative measure against skin cancers. Now answer me these questions. How often do you wear sunscreen on your neck or chest? How often do you wear sunscreen full stop? Just when you go to the beach or on a hot sunny day? If you have darker skin, do you even wear sunscreen? It might be time to extend your skincare regime below the neckline and rethink your idea of sunscreen and what it does. As a person with darker skin, I assumed for years I had this invincibility against the sun's rays. Like Icarus, I was flying dangerously close to the sun. Let me clarify some myths for you. Myth number one, the sun doesn't damage darker skin. This is a common misconception. Although dark skin does offer more natural protection from the sun's harmful rays than light skin, no one is immune to the damage caused by the sun. Darkly pigmented skin has the same number of cells that give off pigment as light colored skin. However, these melanocytes or cells that make melanin, the substance in the skin that gives off color, work differently in different skin types. In pigmented skin, those cells make more melanin and in bigger clumps. This melanin absorbs the sun's rays before they can damage the cell's DNA. By contrast, in light colored skin, these melanocytes make fewer and smaller clumps of the pigment. That makes it easier for sunlight to get through and damage the cell's DNA. It's sort of like an umbrella with a bunch of holes in it. The lighter the skin, the bigger the holes. Anytime you get a sunburn, that's a sign of damage to the DNA. Even a tan is a sign that your body is trying to adapt to an insult. It's trying to make its umbrella bigger by producing more melanin because you've harmed the DNA. In other words, there's no such thing as a healthy tan. Darker skin may not show these visible signs of sun damage as readily as light skin, but it's still happening. Melanin offers some natural protection, but no skin is 100% effective at preventing sunlight from coming through. When sunlight penetrates cells, UV radiation damages the cell's DNA, which compromises the body's basic blueprint for growing new cells and structures. As a result, you get an overgrowth of atypical or abnormal cells that the body is less equipped to recognize and destroy. Myth number two, people with dark skin don't need to wear sunscreen. Sunscreen provides added protection against the UV rays that can cause skin cancer and is recommended for all skin types. Sunscreen increases the skin's natural resistance to sun damage by absorbing and reflecting sunlight. This additional resistance against sun damage occurs with sunscreen use regardless of the baseline pigment of the skin. If we go back to the umbrella analogy, if the skin's natural melanin pigment is comparable to the body's umbrella, wearing sunscreen can be likened to that of using an umbrella and wearing a raincoat. No matter how good the umbrella is, you'll end up less wet if you also wear a raincoat. Myth number three, Skin cancer doesn't affect people of color. It's true skin cancer is more common in those with lighter skin, but the rate of skin cancer diagnosis is proportional to the pigment in the skin. That explains why just one to 2% of all skin cancers occur in black people. But in fact, the evidence shows that people with darker skin tones are actually more likely to die from skin cancer than people with lighter skin types. They are less likely to take preventative measures, such as wearing sunscreen, and are also less likely to routinely check for signs of skin cancer. As a result, when dark skinned people are diagnosed with skin cancer, the disease may usually be at an advanced stage and more difficult to treat. A poignant example of this is reggae music legend Bob Marley. For example, he had a type of melanoma that appeared first under the nail of his big toe. Not a particularly common place for a melanoma to start, but it is in people with darker skin. Also, an SPF of 15 indicates that 93% of the sunburning rays are deflected. 
In fact, my skin tone, for example, have a natural skin protection factor of up to 13 and filter twice as much UV radiation as a fair skinned person. Myth number four, sunscreen blocks vitamin D production. The fact is we all need vitamin D. And when your skin is exposed to sunlight, it manufactures vitamin D. The sun's ultraviolet B rays interact with a protein called 7-DHC in the skin, converting it to vitamin D3, the active form of vitamin D. High SPF sunscreens are designed to filter out most of the sun's UVB radiation, since UVB damage is the major cause of sunburn and can lead to skin cancers. UVB wavelengths happen to be the specific wavelengths that trigger vitamin D production in the skin. Nonetheless, clinical studies have never found that everyday sunscreen use leads to vitamin D insufficiency. In fact, the prevailing studies show that people who use sunscreen daily can maintain their vitamin D levels. One of the explanations for this may be that no matter how much sunscreen you use or how high the SPF, some of the sun's UV rays will reach your skin. An SPF 15 sunscreen filters out 93% of UVB rays. SPF 30 keeps out 97% and SPF 50 keeps out 98%. This leaves anywhere from two to 7% of solar UVB reaching your skin, even with high SPF sunscreens. And that's if you use them perfectly. The truth is it doesn't take much sun exposure for the body to produce vitamin D. That minor amount of exposure produces all the vitamin D your body can muster. After that, your body automatically starts to dispose of vitamin D, at which point your sun exposure is giving you nothing sun damage without any of the presumed benefit. Now excuse me while I drown myself in sunscreen and if you enjoyed this hit the subscribe button for more debunking of myths and hopefully helpful information.